All right, so now that we've talked about direct observations and indirect observations, we need to now understand that as good as you are, there's errors involved in those. Whether you're directly doing it or calculating something, there's always some sort of error that's involved inside there. So what I'm going to give you here, here's your general equation. Your error is equal to your observed value minus your true value. You'll see it written this way uh, if you look in the book. Okay, x bar, usually you take that to be the mean, um, and x is your, uh, your observed value in, inside there. So, so this is how we're going to, we'll, we'll take a look at it right now, we'll, we'll use this as for, our, uh, for our equation. Now as we talk about errors in our observations, we need to, there's, there's several things that we need to understand about an observation. Okay, the ob one is the observations, they are never exact. Two is that they always contain errors, like I said, indirect uh, or direct observations, whatever they may be, they always contain errors. The true value is never known. Now you say, well, well Professor, what the heck, I, you just gave me an equation down there that says the errors that equal to observed minus true value, well, how can we compute that? Okay, well, we'll get into that. We'll, um, I'll, show you what we'll, we'll end up doing to be able to change the true value because really it really cannot be known. It, it, it really is not known. Um, and what I mean by that is if you take a, uh, if you take a scale um, and it's measure, you can measure to the nearest tenth of a foot. Okay, so then you can, by interpolation, you can measure to the nearest hundredth of a foot or half of a, half of a tenth of a foot if you want. You know, if that graduation is, is a little more a little more precise, then you can go down to, uh, you know, next to, if it's to the hundreds, you can get into the thousands. If it's to the thousands, you get into the ten thousands, whatever it may be. You know, as better equipment is developed, observations, they more closely approach their true values, but they still can never be exact. Because there's always a further graduation, a further interpolation that you can be made. Now, when I say that not counts, what I mean by that is if you're observing how many cars are going to pass by in front of you, that you can know. That's an exact amount. But we're not talking counts here. We're talking an observation that, uh, that uh, has some sort of measurement value to it. Now, the other thing is, is the exact amount of error. So if you're looking here at error right there, okay, this we say we don't know. We do know what our observed is, but this error right here, it never truly is never known it as well. Uh, the exact amount of it isn't. And again, we'll get into that and figure out why that is and how that is and, and, a, and a way that we can get around there to properly model the things that we're doing and the measurements that we're making. First thing I want to do is make sure that we understand that mistakes are not errors. A mistake can be a misunderstanding. A mistake can be carelessness. A mistake can be fatigue. A mistake can be poor judgment. So what I mean by something like this, uh, whether it's carelessness, fatigue, poor judgment, or misunderstanding, anything like that, what if you made a measurement and on the screen it says 98.01 feet? Great. But what if then you wrote, because you were tired, you stayed up late the previous night, you stayed out partying, you did something else that you were just tired and you're just not being very careful. And you write down 89.01 feet. That is a mistake. That's just flat out, that's just a, a mistake. Mistakes are something that it's caused by you. And the one thing I want to make sure we understand as we go through lab or as we go through uh, any measurement we make, you're going to make mistakes. It, it happens. Um, there's, there's steps we take to be able to avoid them, but sometimes it happens. So, so take that with a grain of salt. To don't, don't think that means that it, as bad as you are, as terrible as you are, but it, it's going to happen, so, so not to worry. The thing is to be able to make sure we see that it happens and we make a correction for it. Okay. So, so as I look right here, there's two things to talk about. One is a large mistake. So if I wrote down a value of 1,000.01 feet, and in the office you came back and you saw that it was 100.001 feet, okay, that's a pretty obvious mistake. 
if you made the measurement and you're like, whoa, I, yeah, I know something's wrong there. That's a large mistake. It's really easy to find. It's really easy to see because you knew what to expect. You knew what was inside there. What about a small mistake? You think you're always going to capture a small mistake. So what if back up to this, uh, this example right up here. Let me get rid of some of this right here. Okay, if it was 98.01 feet. Now what if you wrote 98.10 feet? Is that that large of a mistake? It is a mistake. You wrote it wrong, fatigue, whatever reason it was, but it is not that large of a mistake. And what happens now is, is this type of mistake right here easily gets mistaken then to be an error. Which, again, we'll, we'll show later is how we'll model that and, and try and take care of that. But that's something you always have to keep in mind. Now, today with technology, we're not writing down as many things. It stores the information. Uh, so you're not necessarily writing and, and having some some poor judgment like that. But there could also be poor judgment in citing. There could be poor judgment in, in anything else that you're doing that's creating this. So it's not always related just to what you write. Okay, mistakes are just that. They're just they're blunders. They're things that we need to always make sure that we can eliminate and get rid of. So now we have three sources of errors that we're going to talk about. First one are natural errors. Those are caused by variations in wind, temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, uh, refraction, gravity, magnetic declination, uh, anything like that. Now, a good example relates back to, you know, years and years ago, they would use a steel tape to make a measurement, to make a distance measurement. Well, steel tape based upon temperature could vary. Steel tape, uh, that's just what it, what it is. Uh, now, we don't use that anymore, but the instruments we do use still have to be calibrated to be working at certain temperatures. So natural errors can fall with inside there if you're not very careful. So say about an instrumental error. All right, that comes from an imperfection in the construction or the ad adjustment of the instruments, you know, from any parts that are moving or uh, any, anything inside there. Uh, in the book, you'll read it talks about scales, okay, scales that you can, you can read that weren't exact and, and perfectly placed on the instrument itself. We're not going to run into that these days, but inside the instrument itself, there could still be some instrumental errors that are, you know, just it wasn't constructed perfectly. Yeah, you're spending, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars on some of this equipment and you expect it to be perfect. But there's still something inside there that could be just not working right. So you always got to keep your keep in mind what that is. Now here's personal errors and this is what I want to make sure. I just talked about mistake and said that that's you. A mistake is you. You are making the blunder and doing something. Okay, personal errors are not mistakes. Let's always make sure and keep that into mind. Okay, personal errors arise based on limitations of your senses, of sight and touch, whatever it may be. An example could be a small error, you know, in an observed value of a horizontal angle. If you're looking through the, uh, through there and you see the crosshairs and, and you just can't quite get it right on there like it should be. That's a personal error. Okay, based upon some sort of limitation. So if you take this guy, for example, well, he thinks what his waist is, there's a limitation there if you can even see where it's at. <clears throat> okay, with these errors here, as I'm going to talk here, you have systematic, and then you also have your random. Okay, we talked about the sources, we talked about mistakes or not errors, now these are the type of errors here. Systematic, these are the good ones. If there are ever to be a good error, these are the good ones. The reason I say that is because they can be corrected. They can be modeled mathematically. Let's take the uh, example, go back to your, your instrument. If you can figure out that your instrument consistently measures short, per one foot it always measures a hundredth short, that's something you can make a correction for. So you can model that and you can correct it. So with systematic errors, it's so long as the conditions remain constant, that's what allows you then could to, to mathematically model those changes. Now random error, that's, uh, now that's where we're getting into, where we're saying that uh, we don't know how much is really in there. We don't know what it is. 
is you look at the equation right here, you take all your total error right here, take out your systematic error. The reason we take that out is because it can be corrected and we can get rid of that. And hopefully we've realized and we've known and we've recognized where those mistakes are. If we can if we take those things out, that's what random error is left with. Just things that are out there. They're caused by factors that are beyond the control of, of you, of the observer, of, of whoever it is. And the way these random errors work is they obey the laws of probability. So we'll talk a little bit about probability here in, in, uh, in just a little bit. But keep in mind that random error, as you take care of everything else, it's present in every, every, every observation that you're going to have. Everything is going to fall inside there. <clears throat> so, so as we get talking about that, that's what we're going to do. And, and for the most part in the future, when we start talking about error, we're always going to assume that systematic errors, we've already accounted for those. Mistakes, we've already accounted for those as well. Because uh, we, you know, hopefully we're smart enough to be able to see it and then we can model everything and get rid of everything else uh, out that, uh, that we can. And the random error then as we try and figure out what that error is, it could be a positive error, it could be a negative error. It's, it's up to chance, it's up to probability as to what it could be. So there's no absolute way to compute them, there's no absolute way to eliminate them. So what happens is, is there, like I said, if it's based upon probability, there is a way, though, that we can best estimate it. Um, it's not exact, but uh, it's a good way to at least give us a, an idea of the amount of error that we really, truly have inside there. <clears throat>